Okay. Um, a lot of people asked me to make this video, and uh, it's certainly going to piss some people off. Um, but it shouldn't. I mean, you should be open to understanding things, making things simpler. I was talking about last video, a color checker passport. Um, here's an undeniable fact when it comes to a light meter or using a little uh, color checker passport like this for a white balance. Uh, it doesn't matter if it's landscape or uh, headshots or on location portraiture or uh, hitting the weddings is that you are never going to get paid to Photoshop and screw around all night long in Lightroom. You're never going to get paid for that. You're paid to shoot pictures and produce results. Nobody gives a damn if you spent 20 minutes in Lightroom or uh, two hours in Lightroom. They don't give a damn and they're never going to pay you for it. So why are you going to piss your time away doing it? Um, I had some people say, well, you know, you're going to do a video on uh, light meter. And, uh, you know, I can do the same thing with the histogram. No, you can't. Histogram is after the fact. Histogram also cannot tell you. Now, see, here's, uh, here's a fact. So in 75% uh, of a typical shot, 75% uh, uh, of a shot, of a typical shot, your data uh, is up in the top three stops of the dynamic range of your picture. Uh, you know, a contrasty scene, uh, much less a bright scene. It's the top three stops of the dynamic range of your camera. Each f-stop records half of the light of the, pre of the previous stop. So we're talking about some serious fall-off after the first three stops, the topmost of the limit of the exposure of the dynamic range of your camera. I'm not talking about the exposure latitude, I'm talking about the dynamic range of the highlight detail that's been lost because you have either decided to uh, spot meter your shot and of course every way you meter a shot is your compositional choice as long as you have complete control I mean if you want to make a shot look dark and moody and that's what it calls for that's fine you know I have certainly made a thousand you know declarative statements that not everything has to be perfectly exposed if the compositional demand is that um, it be dark and moody and only one sliver of someone's face is illuminated you know that's fine but you also have to know what it is you're metering for and if you're going to sit there and spray and pray, you know, that, that's also a waste of time. Like I said, you're not being paid to Photoshop and screw around in Lightroom. And once your highlights are blown, they're blown. With the light meter, you get the exact same measure and luminance. When you take it, see, every camera, you know, is a reflectance. Your, your DSLR, your Nikon, your Fuji, your Canon, that's a reflectance meter. No different than the one degree spot meter that's on the side of the Sekonic. This is a 758DR. This is my little dream boat light meter. I got by with uh, a Minolta, two different, well, two different Minoltas and a, uh, and a cheapy Sekonic incident meter for a long time. This one has a built-in uh, radio uh, transmitter that will actually let me pop my, uh, my uh, pocket wizard flashes so I don't have to get near them. I could take a one degree spot meter reading. I can uh, roll my jog dial, hit my mode button, and drop it over uh, to... Uh, uh, transmission mode so it'll actually activate and I can pick the channel you know I can have several different uh, uh, speed lights or studio strobes out there hooked to my pocket wizard I could choose each one off of a different sweet frequency pop it and I could check with one degree spot meter the reflectance of what is going on there background light hair light fill light main light it's so easy you know you could trigger one your camera you know, like before you get people that have a hissy fit talking about, uh, you know, a light meter and how useful it is, if you were doing a commercial photography or corporate photography uh, and the studio work, you know, the notion of not having a light meter is just insane. It, you can sit there and spray and pray and you can bracket your shots all day long, but there's nobody, I've never seen anybody that's layering light with speed lights or studio strobes that doesn't have a light meter. I have not seen one damn person that uses more than one light that does not use a light meter. You can pop off each light at one time. It's so easy to do. It's like, well, a light meter complicates things. Well, it might be a complicated device to learn how to use and learn what the difference is between uh, taking a uh, incident reading and taking a one degree spot meter reading. But if I have a main fill light over here, not continuous, but it could be continuous, but a main fill light of a studio strobe over here, then I have a hair light back here, not that I have any hair. You know, all I have to do is choose how many stops above or under, depending on the compositional choice that I want. And all I have to do is just take like a main 
a main uh, light reading and say I want to drop it to two stops below that and I'll trigger the second uh, studio strobe or speed light and then if it's uh, over or under I'll adjust the uh, the power output on that and your camera no camera including your camera can do that crap you can't do it you can sit there and fiddle and piss and you know let your clients like uh, you know like look at her fingernails and like is this guy professional or not you know he, why is he fiddling around he keeps taking the same shot of, with the studio with the uh, with the light meter all of that is easy it is really easy um, this is uh, got two meters in it by the way it has an incident uh, sensor and it actually has what is also in your camera it's a uh, spot meter there's actually a little scope to look through here and it actually has a separate display and I can just roll it over the dial on the side from my incident reading to my spot reading. And I actually have a display that I'm looking through here. I can hold it down and then give me constant uh, values. What the neat thing is, too, either way using incident uh, reading or taking a spot reading, is that I can take an incident reading. And where you actually place uh, the, the dome uh, for incident reading, if I only have one light, which I, I, uh, which I have more than one light here, where I actually place this is also an artistic choice. I mean, what do I want a meter for? If I have a person's face over here that's in the shade, if I meter over for here, then am I within the dynamic range of my face or her face that it's going to come out correctly? Well, since I can use this color checker passport, or actually I use a, a grayscale target that comes from, from Siconic, another, it's another target made by X-Ray, but you can use this one also. You can... Uh, calibrate this you can actually store three different cameras in here and what this is calibrated for right now is camera number one which is my Nikon D500 I put that in the slot number one my D810 in slot number two and my Fuji X-T1 in slot number three so my th main three used cameras are in there all I have to do is hit the ISO and mid-tone button and it will my light meter will switch over to the peculiarities of the uh, the dynamic range and my clipping points of that particular camera, so it's not just a light meter. This camera, this light meter, has been told the particular nature and characteristics of each individual camera because each camera is different. Okay, as so far as how it reads ISO 100 or 600 or whatnot, how it uh, will register. Because I can actually check that on the meter reading that I just did. I can take that. And I know what it says for camera number one, and uh, I'll roll it over to camera number two, and it shows me a slightly different uh, reading than I should be exposing for. For my 18% uh, uh, my, uh, gray. No camera has an incident meter reading on it. You know, you're talking about pure reflectance of this, or you know, whatever it is you're pointing it at. You know, an incident light meter is incredibly important. It's invaluable. What are the advantages of a meter? I said at the beginning of this video, I believe I did, or at least I hope I did, that 95% of people don't need a light meter. You know, if you're out shooting birds and fly, you're not using a light meter, although it is useful to take an incident reading, not you want to point it up at the sun or something like that, do this number. I can take an incident reading. I know what I've got. Depending on where it is you're shooting the bird, shooting the bird over there, against the sun, into the sun. These are things you're supposed to know. But... <laughs> I can measure incident light. I mean, a light meter is invaluable. Even if this didn't have a spot meter on, which I, to me, uh, photographic pornography is a one degree spot meter. When I was back in photography school, like the ultimate pornographic tool, not literally, was a Minolta handheld spot meter. It looked like a gun. My God, that tool was fun. Man, I, I could plug in a sync core, which I can do on this one as well, but I actually have, I'll show you in the back here, of this one, which I do have a sync cord port here. Um, if you're not using Pocket Wizards, you can just plug in the sync cord and just bam, pop off your flashes and check an incident reading or a spot meter reading. And another thing that's awesome is that you got a memory button over here. I can sit here and go bam, bam, bam. Each time I take an incident reading, I'll hit the memory button. Another incident reading, a memory button. And then I'll just hit the uh, delta average button. You're going to give me the split the difference between the two. I mean, Getting it once you profile your camera and plug it into this, getting your uh, exposures wrong is about impossible. And then someone will say, "Well, you know, I just take my camera in P mode, and my camera does a good enough job." I already told you, 75% of the data in, of any shot that you take, any normal shot that has even illumination of some variety, is up in the top three stops of the dynamic range. So your camera is exposing for it as well. It's going to take an average, even if you're in uh, aperture priority, even if you're center weighting your shot. 
your camera is going to average the scene and it might expose for here but that means you're clipping off you're losing uh, you know 20 percent or more of your data in the upper end range of the uh, dynamic range of if you're shooting in raw and you know you're not capturing the dynamic range your camera is capable of you know if you if the camera didn't capture it you can't add it in Lightroom you can do a lot of stuff in Lightroom and Photoshop but if the information was never captured to begin with then you're screwed and if you have a camera with a uh, less which isn't a case anymore with less dynamic range uh, than you know say you know a top-end model like uh, you know a Nikon D4S or a Nikon D810 then getting the most out of that dynamic range is incredibly important. I mean, why squeeze the orange halfway? Your light meter is going to tell you the proper exposure once you calibrate it to your specific camera so you're able to squeeze all the orange juice you can or all the informational data out of the shot that's possible. Um, so you're able to extract the true dynamic range of your camera. You can't use your damn camera for an incident reading. You also can't use your damn camera uh, to uh, get a reading off of... You know, plug in uh, your speed light and take a TTL photograph and it will uh, uh, through the lens metering for turning off the flash but that's not metering that is a quench level that's actually sensed by the camera which turns your flash off but your camera can't meter you know autonomous cordless even the newest Nikon D5 with the SB5000 the wireless there's not it's not you know you're not meter you're not doing uh, you know, actual metering through those, uh, you know, uh, drop speed lights. Uh, with this, you can. I can sit there and I can pop off my speed lights or I can plug in a sync cord. What I have on the back here I was going to show you is a little uh, transmitter module. This is a battery over here. And this is actually sends out a signal to my pocket wizards and it will trip my uh, pocket wizards. I can trip them one at a time or all at the same time. Um, it depends on how you want to save time. I can drop each one to a different channel, and I could turn this one to the other channel to check the light off of that speed light versus that speed light. You know, my hair light, my background light, my main light. Or I could trip them all at once, and I could just meter each one and then uh, split the difference. I'll, I'll say I hit the memory button, and I want to do an average of my main light versus my hair light. Well, this one is a stop too high, so I'll just drop it by a stop. You know, I'll dial it down, you know, uh, five, uh, five watt seconds. Or, you know, my background light or my hair light's too hot or it's too, uh, you know, it's too dark. I'll dial it up or down as I need to. You know, you can't do that crap with your camera. This is why, like I said, I've never seen a, a studio photographer or a portrait photographer uh, that uses more than one uh, light. And you can do a lot with one light. But I've never seen one with more than one light that didn't have a light meter. Never seen it. Never seen it. Can't do that crap on a histogram. You, you can't. There's a million ways to skin a cat, but you can't, you can't get there from here. Um, really, really, really important. The main thing, too, that uh, the most incredibly important thing, if you want to do some uh, character lighting, and you give some high contrast light to... Uh, someone's face is like well you can shoot it and bracket it and you know run you need know, to spray and pray but then you're going to be pissing around all night looking for the right shot with the right exposure you know there's an old saying a measure twice cut once you know that or you know you can cut three times you know, a bracketing and you can measure all damn long all night long in lightroom um you know, I don't care how good of a photographer you think you are. I've never seen a master carpenter go, I don't need a damn tape measure anymore, and I don't need a bubble level. I can eyeball it. Well, that shit doesn't work. You know, no one's going to let, well, I don't care if you're a master carpenter. You're not going to build my damn house without a tape measure, you lunatic. You know, this is a tape measure. This is a scientific tool. And when you have, uh, especially with any light sources, even if it's just sunlight, to get the full dynamic range out of your shop, you can take some, you know, uh, I really don't know of any professional landscape photographer, I know there are actually quite a few, but I don't know of any that are actually out there doing tripod, I mean, even Ansel Adams had a, a, had a stinky little light meter, I mean, of course he needed it back then, it wasn't in the camera, but I mean, you know, a light meter is as useful today as it ever was. You know you've got a really sophisticated light meter in your camera, but you know what the hell it can't do? It can't take incident readings. It can't take readings off a damn speed light. It can't take readings off a damn studio strobe. It can't take an incident reading. 
Incidence doesn't take into account snow or black car. Someone's, you know, I don't care how expensive your damn camera is. You can go out and take a picture in the snow. Um, you know, it could be cloudy snow shots. It could be really sunny snow shots. It will screw up every camera every time. You know, you can sit there and dick around and uh, get the exposure right. It's like, I dialed it in, and then your lighting changes. I could take a luminance reading, point it back at the camera, click. An incident reading it doesn't even know if you're taking a picture of a black cat or tons of white snow. It's going to tell you the right exposure. And once you dial in, calibrate this to your camera, it will let you know. It'll even show you, and, and it, will, it will actually flash to you that you've reached the limits of the clipping points uh, for your highlights. It will tell you you're right at the limit of clipping your highlights. You know how useful that is? Once you blow a highlight, there, ain't no, there isn't a damn thing you can do in Lightroom or Photoshop. You're screwed. Gone. So while I can chimp on my pictures and look at the histogram, you and I both know that that little LCD screen, I don't care if it's got three million dots on it, it's not going to show you the same thing as a big old monitor. It's just not. It's not. Get the exposure right the first time. I'm going to bracket it and spray it and pry it. Well, good. Well, you spend all night long in Lightroom dicking around with... 15 bracketed shots for every shot that you took. Like, I took 10 billion shots to get 10 shots. Well, great. I'm glad you put... Well, a light, a light meter takes up a lot of time. Well, really, it does. I turn it on and take an insert and click. Okay, that's my exposure. I dial it in. My shot's perfectly exposed. Damn. Is that quicker? Or, uh, 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 you know, looking through a bazillion pictures at night in Lightroom? Mm, yeah. I'm pretty sure this is quicker. Ah, you don't need a light ray meter. Nobody needs a light meter. Yeah, yeah. I've already said 95% of people don't need a light meter. It's also true that <laughs> the same 90% of people, if they knew how to use one, most people just don't want one because, you know, it's, ah, it's something else I don't need. Well, you don't need a fire extinguisher in your house either. You don't need car insurance. You don't need house insurance. You don't need theft insurance. You know, there's a lot of stuff you don't need, but you'd be a whole lot better off with it than without it. You know, I can live with a tumor in my ass. Yeah, you'd be a lot better without it. The logic that some people apply, you know, which meaning not logic. Um, layering flash lighting. It is impossible for your, your camera is a useless sack of drooling uh, crap when it comes to layering lighting, uh, you know, multiple source lighting or multiple speed lights or multiple studios. Your camera is a useless piece of crap. Um... You know, you're measuring real light instead of consubstantial reflectance. This little incident dome right here, by the way, I can actually shift that so I can take a more specific view of uh, direct incident light instead of uh, some peripheral light so I can raise or lower my uh, incident dome. This is an incredibly handy tool. I've had four light meters, and I won't be without one. You know, if I'm going to go out and, you know, take some casual pictures, and no, I don't need a light meter, you know? But there are a million times that this is incredibly useful. You know, it's... I can't even remember the last part time I saw someone on location with a light meter. You know, it's been a long time. It really has been. And number one is everybody's convinced themselves they don't need it, and generally they're right. And number two, your, uh, your meter and your camera is really good. Yeah, but it's, it's, still, it's still a reflectance meter. It's not an incident meter. And it's stupid. These are people complaining about proper exposure. And you're also not getting the full dynamic range that your camera is capable of. Once you calibrate this, you can get it all. Anyway, I've uh, talked on a bit too much, and uh, thanks for watching. Okay?